Wallace. And I have John Holly here with me. Three phases, dressage, cross country, show jump. And you're out on course and something's going wrong or going right. You know how to react to what they're doing. It was built originally to be a schooling facility and so everything's set up very conveniently. Welcome to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros, and we are here in a really exciting week with an awesome episode, Rick, because we are going to be able to talk all things Kentucky, Land Rover Kentucky, and all things badminton, two of the biggest events in the world, and we have some great guests coming up here as well. We've got Bobby Costello, the new team manager, chef to keep coach, whatever you guys want to call him, he is going to be on and he's going to give us a breakdown of the U.S. riders and his thoughts on the new position. And then we have Mr. Dan Creedle coming to us, uh, who was just an absolute star at Kentucky, Rick. And I know you were there and watched him live. I got to watch him on the live stream. It was awesome. Yep. That was in the four-star short. He was incredible. It was pretty cool. And with those two events, I'd like to point out that Mars Equestrian are presenting sponsors for both of them, which is pretty cool. That's incredibly cool and incredibly uh, kind of Mars to support the sport. Um, yep. But also hopefully kind of shows what we as a sport are growing into that those corporate sponsors like Land Rover and Mars are wanting to be a part of the sport. It's uh, pretty cool. No, I totally agree. So are we going to start with Kentucky then? Yeah. And I just, a real quick side note, I just want you to know I'm back. This is exciting for me, guys. I'm in my own bedroom again. We've been renovating this bedroom since like November. Um, We're nearly done. I just have some pulls on cabinets to get in and then I'm totally moved in. And then I'm going to have my little home studio here shortly up here in the corner of my bedroom. I'm pretty high class. But the reason I'm telling you this is I was going through some stuff and kind of purging things. And as some of you know, I have this addiction to t-shirts and to hats. And I threw out about half of my baseball hats, but as I did, it was actually really cool because I found hats that I hadn't had in a while. And if you see here, I found a Rolex hat of my Kentucky hats. Now this is back when it was still Rolex Kentucky, but I found two of my Rolex hats that I have. So I thought I'd sport one today for the show. It's sort of a- That's kind uh, of vintage. Yeah, this is totally vintage. You can see there's sweat stains on it. Yep, very yeah. good. Well, very anyway. cool. So with that being said, we're going to talk about the Land Rover Kentucky that happened yes. in April at uh, Lexington, Kentucky. And I was able to go up and travel because Elisa was competing in the five-star. So let's start with, what do you want to, do you want to go with results? Yeah, we can just kind of talk about the we, event. We, let's just, yeah, let's just talk. We can kind of go through the results briefly and then we can just talk about the event and our thoughts in it, I would think. Um, sure. You know, everybody knows them. Well, what I'm going to, what I'm going to do for everybody listening and watching is we're going to go through the four star short, which uh, was presented this year for, I believe it's the second year the four star short has run. It used to be a part of Kentucky a while back. They brought it back. So in the four star, we had Elizabeth Halliday Sharp on Cooley, Quicksilver, and First. We had Philip Dutton on Quasi Cool in second. We had James Alliston um, in third on Nemesis. Who, had, quick side note, I'm pretty sure right. I heard, and maybe you can give some insight on this, that he's now American. He'd be riding for America, no longer for. Yes, I did hear that. And his wife is competing um, at Kentucky as well. So um, That's pretty we cool. will talk a little bit more about that. But I think you're right because under his name, it says USA. Boom. We got another one. So good job, go. James. So from another USA uh, person that rode in fourth was Dan Creedle that we're going to have on the show soon. Yeah. Uh, rounding off, exactly. Right, rounding off fifth was Dana Cook on FE Mississippi, a horse that she's been trying a lot with. And I think she's put it all together in the last couple of events and did well Uh, And I know you hate it when I keep interrupting you, but Dana, I have to say, I'm really excited because she was doing a fundraiser. I don't know if you knew that to get to make a European trip with the horses. And in that trip, and this is important to you, Rick, there was $400 in gift cards to Tim Hortons and I won the bid. So when we go to Bromont, because we're going, 
I've got Tim Hortons for everybody. Like well, we're going to have gonna coffee be and store. coolers and donuts and sandwiches. It's going to be amazing. That's a good sidebar bar. And I know Briggs will hate you because he's trying to get down to that weight of running the long, but I think he'll be fine and be able to enjoy anyway. Yeah. Well, you can have a coffee. Come on. Well, sure. So I'm going to round off the next um, two because it was uh, Colleen Loach. Um, she was in, uh, where is she? Six. She was in six. Yep. With F.E. Um, Goldeneye. That yeah, horse is Goldie's really cool. a cool horse. Um, and then we have Elizabeth Halliday Sharp again on Cooley Be Cool. And I got to say this one because I watched her ride. She's Kentucky's favorite. I mentioned to her that she did the best riding I've seen her did, do ever. And that's um, Sarah, Sarah, whoops, sorry about that. Well, Kelly Prather is calling me. I wonder why. All right, um, Kelly. Um, that it was on Ruben's, dis, how do you say his whole name? Ruben Dysix? Dysix? Uh, I call his full name Ruben. Okay, Ruben. Look, yeah. Sarah Cosmic. Cosmic? Blick, Cosmic Sarah Blick. Cosmic? Cosm Blick. There you go. Who's no, who dropped Murphy. I'm telling you, that girl was on fire. And I got it. I would give her the, uh, her and Dan, maybe the uh, Land, Land Rover rider on cross country because she was yeah, awesome. Yeah, they looked Just awesome, both of them. Absolutely. Yep. So, uh, we're, you know, I know we talked, you want to talk a little bit about the four short? We want to go into the five long. Let's go to the five because we don't have a ton of time left in this first segment. I want to make sure we get to talk badminton. Sure. I'm going to just do the top five. Go. So we'll go with my, uh, Mikhail Young. Yep. On Fisher Chuck Monk. F R H was awesome. Yeah. What a horse. We had Yas amazing. Yasmin Ingram, who I met on course, a really cool girl from Great Britain on Banzan du Lor. Yeah. We had our beautiful, own beautiful horse. Doug Kane on Quantum Leap. And that Doug was just elated that that horse stepped up to the plate. We yep. had our own Boyd Martin from uh, for with Testerlag um, and Christine Turner and her daughter owned that horse, great people. And then to round that up is um, Buck Davidson on Carlevo. And wow, what a ride they all had for the top five. I know we can go on for that because we had some great US finishes, but you know, Terrific. And if, I will shout out to um, to Hannah Sue Burnett, who rode 19 year old um, Harbor pilot to a great finish of his um, five star career. I think he might be retiring after that. I'm not quite sure, but he was awesome there. Yeah, she's had such a good go on that horse. And um, I don't I haven't heard oh, by Mars. Gonna, yeah, I don't know if he's going to keep going or not, but um, he's he's not the easiest horse cross country I know, but it's such a great horse. Great start with David before Hannah Sue took the ride over and um, an incredibly well-bred horse that I know Jackie and her team put so much effort into the breeding program. And um, I think they actually got that one from over in Ireland, but they put a lot of effort into getting these horses and making sure that they're made to do the sport. And it's been cool to watch. Right. Yeah. Kentucky was um, exciting. We had a lot of fun. I know my daughter competed there. There was a little uh, bad luck in that she lost both front shoes by the time she got to uh, uh, the hollow. So there was a little disappointment there. But overall, that Kentucky course, you know, looked great. It was challenging where it needed to be challenging. And I think it offered the kind of questions we needed for, and Derek did a good job. Things snuck up on people when they didn't think it would, like he always does. Um, so I think it offered a balance and, um, was challenging even for the for the time so I think it I feel like the course did its job the way it should have yeah I, I tend to agree I have to say I sat down for the first time ever and watched from beginning to end like I've always watched it but because I actually went to see my mom for the weekend and so I got to sit down in front of the tv and watch the entire day um, typically in the past I've been riding in between and trying to pick out the rides I want and I thought the five star looked like a pretty great competition. And I think De Derek got that pretty right. Um, I will say, I thought the four short, I was disappointed in the way the coffin rode. I thought he missed a little bit there, but I also thought the riders didn't 
necessarily as a group think terribly clearly through that coffin. Um, I didn't see enough of them taking the long option there when they probably should have. Um, yeah, so why do you say that? Because I think the mistakes made at that coffin is because they didn't gear back and do a coffin canter down to it. So, I mean, a lot, a lot of them came in hot and I don't think- You, you might be hot. right. Again, I'm just saying what I saw on the live stream, but I just saw the good horses, the good horses that went well through there were still rough and terrible. Um, and to me, yeah, it was, it was, if you're going to, if, if it's right, I think the good ride should go through smoothly. And then you have bad rides that obviously don't. And I know it's difficult, but I felt like I didn't see maybe you want only one horse go through there in that four short class where I was like, okay, that's how it's supposed to be ridden. Everybody else was scraping and pumping and flying through. And well, yeah, I, I didn't I, get to I, walk I, it. that's just my impression from watching. I hear you. I, I do know that it was walked and thought to be harder than the five five long um, right. only. Right. And and I guess to to what you're saying, you know, even if it's ridden correctly, if you have a horse that might be ditchy. I mean, we had a five star horse, uh, Johnny, simply priceless, that was ditchy. And even if you rode it right, it'd still be kind of, you know, a little bit. You got to get through it. Right. So I don't know how many of those that you might have seen might have ridden it right, but might have been a bit ditchy that that would call them out. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk with Bobby a lot about all of this and I want to hear his thoughts sure. on that coffin. I do want to just, we've run a little bit over here where that's, which is fine. Um, I, we also watch badminton. I don't know if you got to watch much of that. I yesterday. watched all of it. Yep. Yeah. And I thought it was a great competition over there. Um, obviously Laura Collette won Russell and Cantor was second. Ollie was third piggy March fourth. Ollie again, um, was fifth. And then David Duell was sixth. I will say um, it was a great competition to watch. Obviously, it was, you know, it's the pinnacle of the sport, really. And um, we'll talk a little bit with Bobby on this as well. I watched that ride Ollie had on the horse where they, it was a little controversial at the skinny. And I've been telling people, I don't know what your thoughts were on that, Rick, but I said, you know what? If you read the rule, he jumped it. The horse's shoulders were inside the flag. And the hind end jumped the height of the fence, but the hind end never got anywhere near the fence. But to me, I think the officials probably got it right. And at the same point, I don't think he jumped the fence. So yeah, yeah. And, and we can talk about it more, but I, I, I did exactly what you did. I said, he didn't jump that. And then I went, pulled up the rule like we all did, uh, read it went back and I watched the video and to the point of how it's written, that horse took off and the hind end did come up to the height of the yep. jump. The shoulders went through, but then once it went to the height of the jump, it went back down and went down, you know, the right leg never went through the flag. Right. But to the rule, you're right. It read that it should have been a round, but again, yeah, it I just reminds me and this maybe won't, resonate with you terrible well but maybe with some of the listeners it will of when tom brady was playing the raiders in the afc championship game i think it was a championship game and it was the old tuck rule where he threw the ball and then decided not to throw it and was pulling it down and charles woodson hit it and fumbled but then they said that it was a forward pass not a fumble because the arm was going forward and they had to change the rule because by rule it was an incomplete pass but in reality you watched it and you're like he fumbled the ball so i think I think to me, Ollie fumbled the ball, but by the rule, he jumped the fence. So might be something that the sport needs to look at. With that said, Rick, um, we're, we're way over. Well, let's, let's call it down and we'll come back and we'll talk more about it in this episode. All right. So we're going to take a quick break here, guys. Please check out all of our sponsors. They support this show and make it happen. Um, great people. We actually have a new one, Rick. We got Jay Hambly is a, a sponsor of the show now. How cool is that? Glen Arden Farms. That is really cool. And before we go, I think that's really cool, Jay. Thanks for being a supporter. But we must do a shout out at badminton for Tammy Smith, who is the highest place U.S. rider at ninth place. So For sure. Go. Tammy's going to get talked about a bunch because coming up next, we got Bobby Costello. And we're going to talk all things American, all things Kentucky, all things badminton. So we'll be right back. Want to advertise on the John and Rick show? Contact John at 352-875-8622 or call Rick at 850-879-2649.
For a horse owner on the road, your trailer is essential. No one enjoys being stuck on the road. At Horse Trailer Pros, we repair, renovate, and maintain all makes and models of horse trailers. We work directly with your insurance company or manufacturer for warranty repairs and insurance claims. Our state-of-the-art facility provides quick turnaround and friendly customer service. Considering a living quarter conversion, we do those too. Find comfort on the road with Horse Trailer Pros. Call or text 352-804-2131. Horsetrailerpros.com. Jay and Pip Hambly of Glen Arden Farms are located in Fergus, Ontario, Canada, and Williston, Florida. Looking to get an edge at the competitions? Jay and Pip will use their years of experience as advanced level competitors to teach, coach, and train you and your horse to be your best. Looking for your next horse? Pip is one of the best and specializes in sourcing quality thoroughbreds. Jay is a level 4 or 5 FEI course designer and designs extensively throughout the world. Come compete at the recognized horse trials in Canada this summer. They also have cross-country jumps in stock for you to take home, or Jay can custom build exactly what you need. Contact Pip at 519-820-0586. Hey, Rick here. Do you have a horse suffering from poor performance, anxiety and fear, low appetite, agitation or nervousness? Stressless can help. Stressless, the hot horse remedy, is veterinarian developed all natural formula that promotes calmness, focus, and mood balance in horses experiencing stress related to training, showing, racing, stall rest, and travel. This equine supplement encourages calmness, focus, and mood balance without affecting the motor skills or energy levels of your horse. It promotes a more willing and balanced temperament with no drowsiness or impaired function, resulting in increased focus, a calm mind, and a happier horse and rider. Try Stress Less today and see for yourself why we think Stress Less is the best hot horse remedy you will find. Check us out at centerlinedistribution.net and on Facebook and Instagram as Stress Less Horse Supplement. Welcome to the John and Rick Show. We're in episode, what episode are we in, John? I don't know. Oh my gosh. So we're in segment again. two of episode of episode whatever, but it's a great episode because we have Bobby Costello, who has been named. I think they call you the interim manager U.S. for the yes. U.S. team. Yes, that is, that is true. The interim. So we're going to say interim only because I think you should be always the manager, but we will discuss that <laughs> later. Early so days. This is, Early days. <laughs> Exactly. This is the Stressless segment, which thank you, Stressless, for sponsoring this segment. It's a great calming um, uh, supplement that we give to our horses. Bobby, you're just fresh back from over the pond. We want to talk to you about several things. Instead of getting your brain all like going for what just happened, because you remember all that, mm -hmm. John, why don't you take him to Kentucky and welcome Bobby to our show? Yeah, Bobby, thanks thank for you. coming on. Hey, can I just say one thing? Two, no, two things. Yeah. First, John, thanks for even getting cleaned up for me to be on your show. It was yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, I, I thought about shaving and I was like, ah, it's just Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I couldn't wait to say that. And then secondly, like truly, like I got, I got into my house from the airport flying from England this morning and I just got back this afternoon about 15 minutes ago. So, but I'm fresh and I'm ready to roll. Yeah, Yay. and that's that actually makes my appearance even more embarrassing because I've been <laughs> home all day. But you've had to be out in public. I've been at home working and slogging away, getting ready I for know. try on. So cut me some slack, man. I will. I will. I just I just couldn't wait to bust you on that because you're always looking so fresh. Okay, let's go. Exactly. I, I let's appreciate do it. Before we get to Kentucky, though, why don't you talk to us about this great job that you have and what you're what you're entrusted to do for the U.S. Right. So I, I was um, hired fairly specifically, I believe, to um, to 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 buy a ship for the next, you know, five months, however long is left until until the World Championships in Protonia in the middle of September. So that will include, or has included, uh, because I've been doing doing my job for all of about two weeks now. Um, the last two uh, selection trials. Kentucky and um, badminton, which I just returned from. And then obviously the, the remainder of the selection trials, including Lemulin, I think is the last one. 
And then, um, and then we're gonna send a team over to Aachen uh, at the very beginning of July. Uh, the uh, World Championships are they fall a little bit later than a, an Olympic game. So uh, we have a, a little bit of a break maybe in there, um, you know, where we'll be choosing the team and getting everybody to a mandatory outing um, sometime in mid August. And then, um, yeah, so it's going to, I think that it's going to be super fun. The time, the time's going to fly by. It's going to be super intense. I think, um, I am here to, to just, to try to bring everybody together, bring all the, all the riders together with their different, with their different programs and, and, you know, and just make it work for, for this, for this championship. And I've been super unabashed to say that, you know, we have really good riders, we have super horses, and we should go there with every intention on bringing home a medal. Just kind of put it out there, so. Oh, I think you, that's the good way to go. John, you go. Um, I want to get into that whole team thing, but what I'm thinking we should do here, Bobby, is let's talk Kentucky right now. Um, so, obviously, we have these two competitions between Kentucky and badminton and Kentucky is the one where we had the majority of the Americans. So I'm just sort of curious, let's start with your thoughts of the performance of, of our team caliber riders. I know Doug was obviously our top placed finisher there. Um, but you know, we went in there hoping and thinking maybe we, we were going to have the winner. Obviously Michael Young showed us why he's Michael Young. Um, but what, what, what are your thoughts basically as far as your riders go, not even taking into account the course and how things rode, but like, how are you feeling about your riders coming out of Kentucky? Right. Well, I mean, in all honesty, I was, I was pretty, you know, disappointed um, in, in both the, the four and the five star, you know, that, that the, for, for the most part, you know, it, it's no, I mean, I'm not going to beat around the bush, like our dressage with at, at this level, you know, against, the best in the world is still not good enough. I think there have been some really good improvements made with a lot of the horses, but but um, but that's you know when when you look at what what the what what the results were, not even so much the results, but the scores. And you know people were saying oh they were, they were scoring really hard, and I was like well yeah they were, but you know there was there could have been a lot better. I think ring craft riding, you know uh, whatever is gonna whatever is gonna take to to to, to kind of milk as many points as, as you can get. So I think, you know, um, you know, across the board, you know, take out maybe uh, Michael Young and, and Yasmin from, um, from England, uh, you know, the, the, the scores actually weren't, weren't that great after, after the dressage, but um, I was very heartened to see our riders uh, in the, in the cross country and um, yeah, like, I don't, I don't know. I I'm so happy for Doug. I mean, that he believes in that horse. And I think, however, that he was maybe a little bit of a dark horse to finish that high, but he absolutely deserved it. Um, the horse is legitimately still a work in progress in the dressage. Um, rightly so, you know, he's still young. Um, and, but he just, he, he really shined in the cross country and obviously, you know, show jumped awesome. So um, you know, everybody should be pretty buoyed from that performance for sure. Um, I thought Tester Leg on the cross country, man, I don't think he's ever looked better. I, I, that round was incredible. And, you know, he's, he's not the most careful show jumper on planet earth. And I thought, uh, Boyd rode him especially well in the show jumping and just lowered two rails. And, um, it's, it's unfortunate, but, but it certainly wasn't for, for the horse lack of trying or, or Boyd's riding that day I, I just think it you know had two rails and it was it was unfortunate but it was a really really strong strong performance out of those two um it was great to see buck come back on carlevo that horse is, has been a little bit traditionally not the fastest horse and he still probably is never going to be the fastest horse but 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 buck has really looked at his program looked at his uh training his fitness program and that horse was was quicker than he's ever been um, at this level at, at the five star. So uh, we should all be pretty, pretty psyched about that. Um, uh, Will Coleman's uh, Don Dante just gets, keeps getting better every event, uh, more impressive. Uh, so that's really exciting because I don't, you know, that horse is way under the radar, uh, you know, for uh, off the record was, was a little bit more in the forefront and he 
looked great this uh, that weekend. But um, Don Dante really did kind of step up and kind of uh, come to the fore a little bit. So those are just some of the tops. You know, Sydney Elliott can always be counted on to to, to be solid. Um, you know, she's still working through issues. You know, you know to, to to get the most out of all three phases. But you know, the the, the dressage obviously. But um, yeah, so there was a lot of really positive stuff coming out from the weekend. We had I think six in the top ten. I think after cross country, we maybe had eight that that may be right or wrong but um but i think that we're um you know we should be pretty happy with 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 the weekend overall not not ecstatic but but happy enough for now awesome so you talked about will and just sort of slight maybe transition of, of thought here but i know in the past wills felt a little bit like he was outside of the program looking in Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe, maybe this is going too far too quick with you with your first two weeks on the job, (laughs) but how do you think, how are you going to get all these riders on the same page? You've got these really good riders um, in a huge country. You've got guys like Will, who I think is one of, honestly, I've said this before. I think Will Coleman is one of the best riders in the world um, as far as his technical ability goes. Um, and he actually, I think rides pretty well when he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder, but how do you bring these guys into the program and make them feel like they're legitimately going to, that things are going to be yeah. different? Absolutely. I, 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 I totally agree with you. I think, you know, that, that I, I mean, we've all been, you know, competitive, you know, competitors, either active or in my case, you know, uh, years ago now, but, but man, like I, I, I worry about riders that don't get mad when, when they're either left off a list or don't make a team. If they're just like, Oh, that's okay. Like, like, well, I would expect, you know, you would expect them to be, you know, ticked off. Can I say pissed off on this? Yeah, sure. Uh, you just did. So um, go ahead. So, so yeah, like, uh, you know, the, the, the thing is like, you know, it's, it's a, it's a brutal, it's a brutal sport, you know, and, and, you know, it's, it's not about what you've done. It's what you're doing now. And, I have been in that, in the position where maybe I haven't, you know, in the past where I hadn't been producing the results and you're basically pretty much forgotten for, for that time. And it would annoy the crap out of me back then. Now, when I look back on it, I'm like, well, of course, you know, like, you know, you, you, you gotta be at the end of the day, results matter at the end of the day, team results matter. Um, so, uh, I would be I would be worried if a if if a rider wasn't irritated if they don't get put on a list or on a team. But um, but I think in Will's case, like no one ever doubted his ability. My God, the guy is just incredible in his in his skills. Um, but 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 he obviously did some soul searching and and maybe I don't know made tweaks to his program. But he's just been you know on fire in the last eighteen months, so two years. So I'm so happy for him, for the team, for the country. So. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm super positive about where that's all going. And, and so my job back to your first question is, you know, I, I have a pretty good relationship with all these riders. And uh, the first thing that I did, uh, you know, the first two days after I was hired was to get on the phone and call all 22. I think there's one between 20 and 22 people that, that, uh, applied for the world championships and got on the phone with every one of them. And, you know, went through the same uh, bunch of questions, asking about their program, who they're working with, who their who their vet staff is, if vet vet team is, barrier. You know what they've been doing, how they're feeling, any questions, any worries about the program as it is it as it now is that you see that we can maybe think about going forward. So um, you know, that that was really worthwhile, I think, um, to, to have those conversations. I don't care if it was the person mm-hmm. most least likely to make the world championships this year or the most likely. Um, I had the same yeah, conversation and- with all of them. So um, anyway. Well, Bobby, I want to say something because I think that is probably the first time and I commend you for that policy and what you did. Um, you know, there, there are instances you did exactly what you just said, and I know that to be true. And I think we get a lot, we, I got a lot of people telling me that you did that. And I commend you for those calls because that's exactly the type of person we need in this position that really can formulate and talk to everybody, no matter if you're the, the number one slot or the number 22 slot, 
I think that was a great thing that you did. So thank you. Well, well, it, you know, it was, it was great because there were, there were a couple of people that I talked to and they're like, well, I don't know why I really applied because, you know, I know I don't have the results right now. I said, yeah, but you are so smart because the, the fact that you applied, the fact that the, the, you are going to be on a list, the selectors have to watch whether they want to or not. You are on the list of uh, world championship applicants. It spent what it would have cost, like 50 bucks, 100 bucks or 70 75, bucks to, 75. to apply. And, and like, you can't, you can't pay for that kind of atten attention, you know, like you, like all those riders, no matter who they were, the most likely to go to the world championships, the least likely, they're all going to be watched with the same intensity from, from the selectors because they're on that list. And it's, to me, I don't understand why people don't do, do that more. Like, yeah, you may not go this year, but, but you need to be out in front of these guys and, and just keep like knocking on the door and, and just be like, here I am again. And I'm going to try again to, 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 you know, show you what I can do. And, um, and yeah, maybe it's not going to happen this year or next year, but those people really impressed me that I talked to that hadn't, that, you know, that maybe were taking a little bit of a chance or like, you know, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I was like, yeah, good for you. Yeah, no, so it's great that. advice, Bobby. And we're, I just, I hope everybody's listening to the, the two things that I take away from this as far as advice to up and coming riders or people, old gnarly Apply. people like me who, who want to, to be there is gnarly. produce the results, right? If you want to be thought of, well, produce results. It doesn't matter what you've done recently um, or not recently. It matters what you've done recently. And yeah, apply. Because if you don't apply, you don't get watched. So that's Two yeah. great piece of, pieces of advice for anybody who's wondering, how do I get on the map? How yeah. do I get on the radar? That's how. Produce results, beat, the, beat everybody, yeah. and make sure you put in your application. So with yeah. that said, Bobby, we got to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back. We're going to continue this conversation. We're going to talk a little bit about badminton, probably a lot of it, and um, get some more thoughts on everything. So right. everybody, hang tight. Rick? Thanks to Stress Less for being this segment sponsor. We appreciate you, and here we go. All right, we'll be right back. Hey, Rick here. Do you have a horse suffering from poor performance, anxiety and fear, low appetite, agitation, or nervousness? Stress Less can help. Stress Less, the hot horse remedy, is veterinarian developed all natural formula that promotes calmness, focus, and mood balance in horses experiencing stress related to training, showing, racing, stall rest, and travel. This equine supplement encourages calmness, focus, and mood balance without affecting the motor skills or energy levels of your horse. It promotes a more willing and balanced temperament with no drowsiness or impaired function, resulting in increased focus, a calm mind, and a happier horse and rider. Try Stress Less today and see for yourself why we think Stress Less is the best hot horse remedy you will find. Check us out at centerlinedistribution.net and on Facebook and Instagram as Stress Less Horse Supplement. Hi, my name's Leslie Law and we are a proud supporter of Jump for Joy. We've been using their portable cross-country jumps now for about 10 to 15 years. We love these jumps because as you can see, they're very easy to move. We don't need to take another person on the other side and I could place this fence wherever I wanted to very easily. Rick Wallace here bringing you Equibrew, a live probiotic that is geared to help your horse's gut health. I'm a true believer in this Equibrew and it really makes a difference in all of my horses. Equibrew is safe, non-toxic, and clean sport compliant for FEI and racing events. Equibrew is an intact fermentation product with very high numbers of beneficial microbes. Order at Equibrew.com or 850-879-2649. Summit Joint Performance, the injectable joint supplement used by numerous international and Olympic riders, invites you to experience the winning Summit difference. Made of all natural ingredients, Summit increases mobility and comfort. Win your class with Summit Joint Performance. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros. We are here with Mr. Bobby Costello. Bobby, really quickly, 
give us the official official title. Uh, interim chef to keep of the Land Rover eventing team. No, Land Rover USEF eventing team. I had to do that for like a little video that they were doing. It took it took like. 10 minutes for me to get the, all the words out correctly. Is so. that when you were walking down the center line? Yes, and nobody, everybody was wondering what the heck that was all about, and I don't know. It was kind of fun to do, but it has something to do with ESPN, so John probably knows about that, I don't know. I, I tried to tell him about yeah, it, baby. but he didn't quite understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so Bobby, we got all of our Kentucky, Land Rover Kentucky um, info on the last segment, and so now we want to, fly across you took a plane what day did you fly monday over to england well i should have i should have flown monday i i flew tuesday night my flight out of charlotte got canceled and we were on the plane i guess the same thing happened to everyone on monday night uh so even if i had tried to go a day earlier uh which you know whatever so yeah it was a nightmare getting there but once I, I finally got there early early thursday morning i arrived before the first uh u.s rider went up the center line um and so hold on hold on hold on what you're saying what? is your second horse show on the job you were late to work exactly <laughs> it's exactly what i'm saying because when i originally did my flight i didn't even have this job i was going for you know private oh. people that i coach so um Yes, I was thinking as I was walking off the plane that that was pretty stupid that I didn't come a day earlier. We'll, but we'll discuss said, this on the sport John, committee next week. Said, again, that that flight was even canceled on Monday, so whatever. So I ended You're up flying, flying Bobby, the day, and then yeah, I got there. So let's move on. It's good. Uh, I'm just I'm just teasing you. So <laughs> I know, I know. let's go. You did a great job with Kentucky, sort of running us through the riders. I think that's probably where we should go right here. And then Rick can grill you on it. So just run us through your thoughts on the American riders coming out of badminton. Yeah, I, I really was super, um, you know, again, you know, there, 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 there was, there was a lot of great things that, that came out of there. I think again, everyone, Tammy obviously was just, just shine like crazy in the dressage there. And I think there's even more, you know, the, you know, you could see a couple of places, I think, where, where she's even going to improve that score by a couple of points. Um, I think, you know, it's I think all the other U.S. riders were not satisfied with their dressage there. And it's the same, you know, thing that I talked about at Kentucky, that, you know, there are improvements, but it, it just, I mean, it just is going to, it has to be better. And I, I'm, and I know these guys are going to work at it and it's going to be better but if we really, truly want to be not just coming from behind all the time, but, but, but really making a statement, you know, we, we have to just keep trying to improve, improve, improve on the first day. Having said that, um, you know, it, 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 it definitely was not a dressage competition. Um, um, I, I was really impressed with the course. I, I'd, I'd seen a couple of Eric Winter's courses at, at Berlin, at, at Badman before. I thought that this was actually the most, um, still incredibly difficult, technical, impressive. But as far as from a horse's standpoint, I, I felt that when I walked it, that I thought, yes, I think the horses would, will understand all of these questions. I didn't always, wouldn't always feel that way, but, um, but I really felt that way walking the course, like, like everything, if ridden properly would make sense to the horses. So, um, I was happy about that. Uh, very happy with, um, you know, we had, five, four, five of the seven of our riders get around. Um, uh, we had obviously a great round from, from Tammy. I know that she will always wish that maybe she could have gone a, a few seconds faster, but man, it was, it was, the course was riding pretty tough before she came, before she went. So I think she should be absolutely thrilled. She gave that horse a great, great, great ride. Um, Philip, you know, he did, he, he actually, did not benefit. There was a big hold at the beginning of the, at, you know, a little bit before he went. So Z had to hang around for quite a while in the warm up, and he really takes a lot out of himself because he he gets so pumped up that you know it's, it's like a racehorse when you see a, a racehorse really acting up before going to the start gate. They actually are depleting a little, some of their energy reserves. So I think that happened a little bit with Z. But man, when when Philip got out there, he rode him brilliantly. The horse jumped almost effortlessly and, and faultlessly and um you know got a little bit tired at the end had a few time faults but um but 
but another really solid performance from Z. Um, then we had, I'm looking at my- Ariel. Ari yeah, Ariel. Ariel. God, yeah, Ariel. <clears throat> How could I forget about Ariel? Um, she was, you know, again, I think she was very disappointed with her, her dressage, but, um, you know, looking back a couple of years ago, um, you know, the horses made huge strides in that, in that phase. So, um, I only look for that to get better, um, even over the short, short term, that getting better. And she just rode a super, super classy, classy round on, um, Saturday. There's nothing else to say about it. She was brilliant. Um, Will's, Will's mom is, uh, Will Fodry's mom is Magic Way. Uh, very impressive, very impressive. I know, um, you know, that was a lot. I think Will said in an interview that that was that horse's, oh, like his 12th advanced, not not like, you know, this is that horse's 12th advanced run period, like in his life. So um, he was very, very happy, rode a classy round, really uh, took care of the horse. Again, uh, had a similar amount of time penalties and, um, uh, I was so impressed with Emily Hamill on Corvette, that amazing jump, jumping gray. Oh my God. Um, that was so much fun to watch. Yeah, that was a she's an incredibly round. cool customer. I don't know her that well. And, um, and she, you know, she didn't really have a person there helping her. So I was like, you know, whatever you need, just let me know. And so I was, I was around her quite a bit that, that weekend. And she showed so, so much poise and calmness and just clear thinking. And she just got a little bit pitched forward in the, that top water and couldn't quite make the turn to the, to the, the element in the middle of the water, but she just spun around and jumped out and just gave the horse an incredibly good ride and rode him really well in the show jumping. So that was great. Um, and you know, the show jumping Tammy, I never, overall, I've never seen Tammy ride so well all weekend. She was, she was brilliant in all three phases there. I have nothing to say about her except, um, you know, good things. Um, and, you know, uh, our other horses, uh, uh, Ariel jumped a absolutely stunningly beautiful clear as well. And I think uh, Philip and uh, Will's horse each had two. They both just kind of clunked the first jump. They just, it was an airy vertical and whatever. They, they rode it fine. The horses just didn't jump high up. And, um, and just each had one down towards the end of the course. And um, so anyway, it was a, it was a uh, overall very good weekend. We, we, um, I think, you know, I was hoping that we would come out of badminton with a, another good handful of horses to choose from for the world championships. You know, I was worried going into that, that may not, if that didn't happen, you know, that would leave us a little bit, a little bit short, but I think, um, I think we should be pretty happy with, with the overall result from badminton. Yeah, I agree with you, Bobby. And uh, back to Ariel, I've watched her produce and go through with that horse and I mean, she has done the results. She did Burley. She did really well. I mean, and watching her ride, and I can tell you, Ariel knows, and I would tell her this, when she lost all her teeth, like, three mm. months ago, she just kept going. Oh, she didn't care. And she she just, just kept. I was like, you don't have any teeth. She goes, yeah. I've got things to do. And yeah. so, you know, to your point in the dressage ring, I think it was just unfortunate for her. You know, sometimes at badminton, that atmosphere is huge. And, you know, Back to Tammy, she cantered in the first medium. My God, how about if she wouldn't have cantered in the first medium? You know, those things, she will be scoring down there even lower. So yeah. um, still great horses with great results at badminton. And I know it yeah. was tough. but We should be pretty you know, excited coming out of badminton, I think. Yeah, definitely. And especially to, to Will's point on his horse. And I know that I've seen, I don't know, this, I've seen Tammy helping him with that horse because I in the dressage ring once mm -hmm. he masters that dressage ring that's going to be another yeah. 20 sub he could be yeah. a sub 20 all the pieces are there all the pieces are there it's just like him being able to 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 you know part of that horse's brilliance is his energy level so it's it's just it's not quieting the horse down but just being able to manage that that very positive actually it's super positive energy you know some horses are just nuts and some are just like so happy to be alive and he's a little bit that type. So, you know, it's still a little bit going to, it's still going to take some time to kind of figure out exactly uh, how he's going to go about getting the most out of that horse, but, but um, I'm sure he will. So I know John, we're winding down, right? What's, what's no, time? we're not. I have a really important question when it's my turn. When it is your turn. Hold on. I've got to ask one more. That's really important. It's not my turn. So, <laughs> no, not yet. So Bobby, 
selections, you just said Kentucky, badminton, the Mullen is the last one. What are, are what other ones are there in there? Between we have Tryon coming up this weekend. Uh, yeah, that's there in a day and a half. Uh, uh -huh. So that that is a uh, that is an official selection trial, and um, and there, there's uh, there's going to be a lot of really nice up and coming young horses there. Um, and then we go to Bromont. And then I'm not sure how many will be there. I hope a lot because that's one of my favorite events in the whole entire world is Bromont. And then, um, and then over to Lemulin, I think we'll have just a handful. Uh, it's still kind of formulating who, who, who all is going to be there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, Lemulin will be the last um, selection trial. And then, and then everything kind of starts from there as far as selection goes. Oh, John. Is, it, is it my turn now? Yeah. My turn. Yeah. Yeah, okay. if it, it has Bobby, to be. Bobby, yes, it's gone. just you and me now. <laughs> oh God, we've got Kentucky done. Yep. We've got badminton done. Mm. That's going to be the majority of the horses that we really would like to have, right? So, who's on the team? No, no, no. Do not, no, do not, do no, not come try on. to into that corner. Absolutely, it's just not. you and me. Nobody's going to know. It ain't over till it's over, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> good try that was excellent I, I did what i could sorry guys i tried yeah. to get the get the juice but he won't give yeah, it yeah that was really good <laughs> no true like man it's i uh um 2010 i think it was 2010 12 tw uh, i'm counting backwards so 22 18 14 2014 sorry um uh normandy um I mean, I want to forget the actual competition, but leading up to that, we had, you know, horses at Lemulin, like, at, you know, 11th hour to two of the horses that, that, that did well at Lemulin were put on the team. Didn't go there well. Go. That's, that's, that's a whole nother thing. But, um, but, uh, but no, like everyone has, like, if it's a selection trial, the selectors going to be there. I'm going to be there. Everybody has a shot. So. All I right. Mean, fine yeah, good try, but whatever. it doesn't make for good tv or podcasting <laughs> but fine um listen bobby thank you very much i know you you've got to be exhausted so i really appreciate you coming on rick and i are so appreciative um we're gonna have you back right you'll come back on anytime and awesome. i just hope that you'll shave and like you know do your hair or something well so. i did my I hair work. look oh yeah that looks great thank so, you bobby Bobby, we're hoping to both be at Bromont. And so if we're both at Bromont, maybe we can pull you aside and do another interview lot like up there. Yeah. From we can Bromont. get the team then. You can give us the team. No, I can't. <laughs> Still too early. All right, fine. Listen, Bobby, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Go get some sleep, get rested up because I know you're going to be on to the next uh, horse show. We'll see you in Tryon in yeah, uh, we'll see a couple of days. days. That's great. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thanks very much. We will be right back with Dan Friedel. All right. For a horse owner on the road, your trailer is essential. No one enjoys being stuck on the road. At Horse Trailer Pros, we repair, renovate, and maintain all makes and models of horse trailers. We work directly with your insurance company or manufacturer for warranty repairs and insurance claims. Our state-of-the-art facility provides quick turnaround and friendly customer service. Considering a living quarter conversion, we do those too. Find comfort on the road with Horse Trailer Pros. Call or text 352-804-2131, horsetrailerpros.com. Hey, Rick here. Do you have a horse suffering from poor performance, anxiety and fear, low appetite, agitation or nervousness? Stress Less can help. Stress Less, the hot horse remedy, is veterinarian developed all natural formula that promotes calmness, focus and mood balance in horses experiencing stress related to training, showing, racing, stall rest and travel. This equine supplement encourages calmness, focus, and mood balance without affecting the motor skills or energy levels of your horse. It promotes a more willing and balanced temperament with no drowsiness or impaired function, resulting in increased focus, a calm mind, and a happier horse and rider. Try Stress Less today and see for yourself why we think Stress Less is the best hot horse remedy you will find. Check us out at centerlinedistribution.net 
and on Facebook and Instagram as Stressless Horse Supplement. Rick Wallace here bringing you Equibrew, a live probiotic that is geared to help your horse's gut health. I'm a true believer in this Equibrew and it really makes a difference in all of my horses. Equibrew is safe, non-toxic, and clean sport compliant for FEI and racing events. Equibrew is an intact fermentation product with very high numbers of beneficial microbes. Order at Equibrew.com or 850-879-2649. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros. We are joined by Don. Don. See, now I got your first name wrong, but I was going to get your last name right. So, Dan Creedle, you are here with us. Everybody should know your name because let me tell you what, I've been watching you for a while, and you at Kentucky blew my socks off. You were amazing. Congratulations. We will talk more about that in a minute, but just let us know how it feels to come back from Kentucky and doing how well you did. Yeah, that was definitely the highlight event of my riding career. Um, it was my first time there. It's a goal I had aspired to for many years. And uh, anyway, I think it went, well, winning it would have been having it go as well as it possibly could have. But anyway, we did better, honestly, than I think uh, most people thought we would. And uh, my horse tried his guts out. So it was super fun. And it was a tough enough course, uh, but it was really fun to ride. So it was definitely high. And I'm the nine to 10 kids. I'm the only one in my family that rides. So most of my siblings don't know really anything about this sport. And how many? Uh, Wait, how many? Of 10. Yes. Holy nine moly. of 10? Yes. Yeah. One mother and one father that are crazy. And then, yeah. <laughs> are you <laughs> like, it, hold on. I We obviously, I don't. I don't want to hijack this and get talked. Are you like, is it a farming family? What's the story? <laughs> no, no, there's no farm involved. Basketball. Uh, I mean, you're tall enough for basketball. Yeah. You're yeah, in the did. Hoosier state. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We all did play basketball, but I'm not sure that's why they had 10 kids. I think mainly just crazy. That's two basketball teams. <laughs> But anyway, so it made it really fun that all my siblings came and out, uh, which most of them don't know really anything about this sport. So they ended up loving it and were super into it. And yeah, so it was just a really fun weekend for sure. Wow. Hey, John, I'm going to let you talk in a minute, but I'm going to talk more because he's from the, a lot of people don't know about Dan. So Dan, now that we know that you're nine of 10, yeah. um, you live in Muncie, Indiana. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is the family, is, so tell us about Indiana, tell us about Muncie, tell us what you do. You're a true amateur, um, right? In writing, you don't, you don't, you're not a professional. No. Um, so tell us about you. Okay. Yeah. So I grew up in, in Indianapolis, Indiana, um, and then came to school at Ball State in Muncie, Indiana, uh, where I was an entrepreneurship major and started this business, the Campus Edge, when I was in college. And then just stay, I loved college at the time and the party scene, honestly, probably. Anyway, so I decided to stay in college and got my master's there. But then all my friends graduated and it wasn't that much fun. But anyway, I did finish to get my MBA there. Uh, so that's what I do full time is uh, run the Campus Edge, which we own houses and apartments around Ball State University that uh, we lease to college students. So, um, right. So that's a great work. And then, yeah, I've always liked yeah, yeah, honestly, it worked out super well, and that wasn't totally part of my plan, but we lease all of our properties and get them full for when school starts in August, and then our income is very steady throughout the year, whether we're home or competing horses away, so that works out pretty well to be able to have this hobby for me, um, but yeah, I've always liked horses, and um, my parents thought I would grow out of this when I was a kid, and um, but I did not grow you out did. of it. Yeah, yeah, so I think now that's what convinced. And you're tall. You're like six four, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly six four. So, so you didn't grow out of it even at six four. Say that again. What'd you say? You didn't grow out of it even oh, at six four. No, no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John, shoot, it's your turn. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think it was it was great to watch you, Dan. I remember you were. I think you'd come. Well, I know where you were on course. You were down by like where, I don't know if they were this year, but where the Land Rovers have their off-road course and you jumped yeah. that big ditch. And I remember you did a fist pump as you galloped away, or maybe it was, oh, I got to get myself put back together, but it was really yeah. cool. And even watching on TV, it was, you just, you could hear the crowds just cheering you around and you sort of became, um, 
in a way, even though you're in Indiana, you became like the local hero, the fan favorite to everybody there. Um, but like, that had to be surreal. Like, what was that like going in there as just like, I'm just here to do my thing. And all of a sudden it sort of morphs into you're the, you're the fan favorite. You're the guy everybody wants to have a great weekend. Yeah. Uh, that was a surprise to me. I didn't anticipate that at all, obviously going into the weekend, but yeah, I could feel the energy and, uh, our friends from Indiana, really no one from Indiana really competes at that level. So going to this event was a big deal and they were really getting into it, made a bunch of shirts and stuff I didn't really even know about. Uh, so I knew there'd be some local friends that were going to be cheering loud, but yeah, it seemed like it did grow and definitely could feel the energy. And I will also say I've wanted to do this for years and finally like mentally, I don't know that I the more stressed I get and the harder I try in competition, honestly, the worse it goes. So I'm like, I'm just going to have a, a ton of fun and enjoy this. So that's why I was doing the fist pump to the crowd and like just having a great time. And uh, anyway, yeah, so it was definitely an epic high uh, having the fans behind us. And then like, yeah, going into show jumping in the warm up or when I first went in and at the end, everybody really getting into it. So, of course, yeah, winning it's when you normally see that. But I did, anyway, I figured I'd live it up in the moment, uh, win or lose. So I was going to have a good time. Well, being in fourth place, being in fourth place isn't losing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, it was, that was good. So Dan, obviously, I think the challenge for you from here is going to be you go to an event like Kentucky, you're in the four short class, though, it is such a high, it was such a great weekend for you. Um, like you said, the pinnacle of your career to this point, but I'm assuming you have other stuff you want to do this season. So are you, where are you going? Are you going to try on? Uh, no. And I was planning to go to uh, Bromont, but I don't know. Part of me, I just feel like I've been working hard with this horse. And he's doing really well. And he's only nine this year and I don't know, right or wrong. I don't know. But anyway, I've decided I'm going to just slow down a little bit with him. So basically I'm going to show jump and dressage with him over the summer and then do a four long in the fall and not do the four long that I was planning to do. So, which feels weird because he's feeling great, but I don't, I had three horses going in advance. Now I have one, the other two had minor injuries. And so I'm just feeling cautious right, right now. Well, I think, I think that makes sense. I think that makes sense. And, you know, like I said, the thing is Kentucky, whether it was the four short or the five long, it is in a way a championship at both levels. And um, you've got to have the one thing that I've learned over the years is you got to trust your gut and your intuition. And if you're feeling like the horse wants a little bit of a break and do it in the autumn, then good for you. I would do it. Yeah. I appreciate that. Cause he's felt awesome, but I just, I don't know. I don't want to push my luck. And anyway, we want this horse to go for the long haul. So um, anyway, yeah, so I won't be well, qualified to do the five star next year, which is what I was kind of wanting to do, but it may be Maryland in next fall. Well, what I what I can say is you do train with Sharon White. Yes. Correct? Yes. So what what a person to lean on for advice and things to do. And you know, Dan, I have been following you. I watch you. We we see each other, you know, at events and stuff, but you have done the homework. I mean, you produce results i you've been at the top of the leaderboard a lot so i commend you and i did talk to you i think one of your other horses had a minor injury so to that point and you talking about him being nine and taking this break people are going to commend you for thinking about that and looking toward the future for him so good on you for that cool yeah well thank you i appreciate that um, so tell us about sharon <laughs> yeah she's fun to work with i met her i don't know probably honestly like eight years ago or more, uh, teaching clinics in Indiana and teaching the camp. And uh, she's fun to work with, very nice and upbeat, but also has a different side that'll kick your ass and, uh, for, and get your, <laughs> get you in, in your, on your A game. Uh, but anyway, I really like working with her and her coaching style suits me very well, keeping it simple. And I like to just, I'm probably not the smartest individual. So the simpler it is and the more low key, uh, the better. So that suits me very well. And, and with my situation where I, I couldn't always be there with the horse. And so anyway, she's done a lot of the riding and keep, kept him fit when I had to come back and forth from, from Florida and does a great job with the horses. So I enjoy working with her. Good. John, are we wrapping down the 10 minutes? 
yeah, so let's do this. So let's take a little break here and then we're going to come back and get a little more insight into Dan and your horses and your life and sort of what the future plans are. So Rick, Dan, thanks guys. Let's take a quick break. We will be right back. Jump for Joy fences are easy to move, lightweight, durable, and low maintenance. So we're out here on the cross country. We just finished over in the show jumping over the Jump for Joy fences. Had a great time schooling over them. They're really nice and easy to move, so we were able to adjust some things and really have the exact school that we needed thanks to the Jump for Joy fences. I love them. Order yours at jumpforjoyusa.com. When it comes time to compete, I demand the best out of my horses and myself. That's why Elemental Fit Lab, the home of CrossFit Antics, is my home gym. Coach Vilma and her team create a fun, welcoming environment for athletes of all levels. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned athlete, Elemental Fit Lab will guide you towards a stronger, healthier version of you. Mention the John and Rick Show to get three free personal training sessions with enrollment. Jay and Pip Hambly of Glen Arden Farms are located in Fergus, Ontario, Canada, and Williston, Florida. Looking to get an edge at the competitions? Jay and Pip will use their years of experience as advanced level competitors to teach, coach, and train you and your horse to be your best. Looking for your next horse? Pip is one of the best and specializes in sourcing quality thoroughbreds. Jay is a level 4 or 5 FEI course designer and designs extensively throughout the world. Come compete at the recognized horse trials in Canada this summer. They also have cross-country jumps in stock for you to take home, or Jay can custom build exactly what you need. Contact Pip at 519-820-0586. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros, and we are still here with Mr. Dan Creedle. Dan, thanks for sticking around. Glad to be here. So, here. so Dan, um, we were talking a little bit about your family, and you are the, I think you said the ninth of 10 or the eighth of 10? Ninth of 10. Ninth of 10. Um, yeah. So your family came out. They all supported you at Kentucky, became big fans, but you're also married. And like we were saying, you don't teach and train for your career, which means that this, at least at some point, started as a hobby and you must have a pretty tolerant wife. <laughs> yes. She knew this was a hobby when we started dating and I told her it was going to be a demanding part of my life. And she's like, oh yeah, no problem. And then we got married and she's like, what the heck? I didn't realize it was going to be like this and then you're going to be gone and on and on. Uh, but anyway, yeah, she's become super supportive of it because it does take a ton of hours every day at the barn and on the road at shows and stuff. Um, so and she's learned to braid and that she's not really into the horses, but likes to get the updates. So anyway, got an awesome wife, super supportive and awesome mother. We have two little kids, a newborn and a four-year-old. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Uh, she's done 90. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's pretty uh, awesome. And I do, I do like, and I think it's very smart that even though she's not into horses, you got her to learn how to braid. Good move. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't really braid and out of desperation and, and I wanted to make her part of the team, I thought, but anyway, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's been fun. So, uh, and she likes, I mean, just supporting the hobby that I have. And it's been awesome in that way. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, well, I want to, I want to take him back to Kentucky real quick. Cause you know, I know he's mentioned a couple of times he wanted to win. And I think Dan, it took us all. I took me by surprise. I was literally standing up and screaming at the screen when you came around the turn. Tell us what was going through your horses. What fits Fritz? What's his brand name? Prince. What was going through his head? Was he going over that jump and seeing the crowd? What made him bulk a little bit? Yeah, funny. He's literally never, I got him as a four-year-old and he's and ridden him every day since. But anyway, uh, he's never done that in competition. So that was quite a surprise to me, um, to say the least. But I don't know. Honestly, I think it was the jump and maybe the crowd behind the jump. Um, but to me, it felt like it was the jump and he saw the crowd, I thought, at the beginning. But and normally, if he hesitates a little bit, I can just say, come on, boy, you got it. And like he goes, like he always goes. He's never run out or anything in his entire career. He's an awesome horse. But he, like, really didn't want to go. And I thought, oh, my gosh, like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm going to get eliminated. Or I, Anyway, I never even crossed my mind of what to circle or what to do. But anyway, I kind of just kept and pointed at it. And 
and thank God he went. And honestly, from he was only maybe two strides out and like trotting up to that jump. And I thought, oh my gosh, he's probably going to just eat this. I mean, crash through it. And anyway, he tried super hard. So I was glad we got going. And honestly, it made the ending of it feel a little bit better for me um, because if everything might have been perfect and I had the rails, I would have probably been bummed a little bit more. But he definitely didn't want to go. And when he changed his mind and decided he was going to go, I was just relieved and like, let's get through this. So, um, yeah. Well, hats, hats off to you, John. Did you see that happen? Because I can tell you, I was really impressed with him because Dan, just like he said, he was like, what's going on? And then he put his leg on and the horse went. He actually jumped that. He didn't pull that rail. No, yeah, he. Yeah, I think at the next three jumps, there's the it line was, of five jumps in a row, and I'm like, of all places for him to balk was not right. ideal. <laughs> and then they gave you, unfortunately, I would have, it would have been me and Dan. You're so nice and and easygoing. <laughs> I would have, I would have gone and said that wasn't a disobedience, but I think they gave you a disobedience with four for that, right? Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm with you. I was. I kind of did casually talk to him about it because I was like, what the heck? I mean, the horse's feet actually did keep moving, even though he definitely boxed, but I thought it was a little bit cheap. But anyway, I've I never that's all right. you, you live with it and hats off to you because that's just <laughs> the kind of guy you are. John, I don't know if you have any input for that, but did you see it? I didn't see it. I heard bits and pieces about it. I'll admit I'm with Rick. I would have complained, but I'm also the guy who's gone to events and had organizers tell me that they're really disappointed that I'm there. So <laughs> that may not be the right way to go. Uh, and I do, think, I, I, I do think, Dan, um, like thinking of a competitive goal, I think sometimes if you're known as the guy who plays by the rules and doesn't complain and you made an inquiry about it and you were told why and that's the way it was that gives you a little bit of stock a little bit of standing so that the next time when maybe there's a question about it I think it probably goes your way so um, you're getting a little bit of cosmic credit there is what I would say well cool. well next but, time I need somebody to raise hell I'm going to come to you guys and uh, see what you yeah, no, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really good at raising hell. <laughs> oh, I can tell you, Dan, if they see me or John walking up, <laughs> we will make sure it's filed correctly and <laughs> everything's looked at and it goes your way. <laughs> I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a quick little story, Dan. I went to <clears throat> an event, uh, went to Plantation Field and I just got there. I drove like, like 18 hours from Florida, got in the middle of the night, put my <laughs> horse away. I get up the next morning feed the horses, get on my first one to go out for a hack. Dennis Glackham, who I really like Dennis, <clears throat> is on the golf cart. He drives up to me, looks at me and says, oh, I'm really sad to see you're here. And I was like, <laughs> I just wrote you a check for like two grand for all these entries, drove 18 hours. I don't know. I thought I didn't expect like a cup of coffee and a, and a breakfast or anything, but I thought maybe like, hey, John, good to see you might've been nice, but uh yeah, so sometimes being the nice guy is the better way to go. <laughs> That's a funny story. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so you were saying that you're going to take some time, do some dressage and show jumping with Fritz. So when do you anticipate at this point, and obviously everything is flexible in life and in horses, but what's your plan? I know you were saying you want to do try on maybe in the autumn. Um but what's, I think it was try on, um, what's the plan for getting started? Yeah. So, um, show jump and dressage over the summer and then, then yeah, get back to eventing in the fall and uh, yeah. So do a four long in the fall and then probably Romont next summer, uh, in 2023. And then maybe thinking out loud, um, do, trying the Maryland five star as the first five star. So I really wanted to we, do Kentucky right. next year as a five on the five star, but with my gut, even though the horse is feeling good, I'm thinking that it, not going to be the case for next year well dan just because we know as because we got off with bobby costello is make sure you apply for everything so when you go onto the usef website and you see the dashboard and you see apply for Aachen or you apply for the nation's cup or you apply you apply really okay. all right yeah no, do it not apply you don't if you I'm just telling you, always apply. It's 75 bucks, I think. For some of it's free, but you want them looking at you. And unless you apply, they don't look. Well, they look, but they can't look. 
because that they're naming teams for stuff. So that's my my input to you because I give it to Elisa all the time because she always goes, why am I applying? I'm not ready. I was like, you want to apply. Good to know, yeah. Right, right John? Cool. Upper world, uh, upper level scene is all still a little new to me. So anyway, good, very good input. Never thought of it. Yeah, no, you absolutely should. It is good advice. You didn't know you're going to get great advice on this show, did you? <laughs> um, but, yeah, but, but it is I great advice because I know that they've come to riders. I'm, I know of it happening several times when they've come to riders and said, we really wanted to have you put on this list for you know these this last squad of eight or ten horses to be considered for the team but you didn't apply so we can't do it so um that's just general so, advice so i want to say one more thing that i caught you say john you said try on next year in the fall it's not try on it's going oh, to be right. terra nova for, for the four long you're right it's well what try on is doing the four long this fall aren't they yes yeah are they it's this so fall. they're having Morvin. Yeah, yeah. It's Morvin Park has the four long. Fair, sorry, Maryland has the five, and then Tryon this year still has the four long because 2023 is when the new calendar comes in. Paranova. So, okay. gotcha. Do you have anything else you want to say to me, Rick? <laughs> no, but your wedding ring's nice. I'm, I'm, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Terra there Nova's we not go. 2023. <laughs> See how mean he is, Dan. <laughs> I'm glad you're show. Hilarious. Uh, well, listen, Dan. Um, we do really appreciate you coming on. It's been a treat. I've seen you. Like I know when you rode with Leslie, I got yeah. to see you at a lot of events. I've watched you at all the events down here in Florida, but I've never really gotten to sit down and talk to you. So um, it's been nice to get to know you. I know everybody in the country, and truly anybody who watched Kentucky around the world. <laughs> is a big fan. And, you know, I think one thing I just want to say before we close up here is, you know, we said in the beginning, Oh, you know, like you're a true amateur. I think one thing that I am always a little bit sensitive to myself is you might be an amateur in the aspect of you don't have your career based around riding, but you rode around that course as good as anybody you rode around that course, like a pro. And I want to make sure that, you take the time to appreciate what you did. And I'm sure you do. I don't know you, but I'm just saying this in general. Like, I feel like sometimes people say, Oh, I'm an amateur. And like, Oh, they almost use it as a little bit of a way to discount themselves. You're a pro man. You rode awesome. The sky is the limit. I think people are going to be talking about how awesome you are for years to come. So kudos to you and great job. Awesome. Yeah. Greatly appreciate the encouragement. I double that. So thanks, Dan. I can't wait to see you back out again. And as we've talked about before, I'm, I lived in Indiana. I was on the, in the Peru circus. I love Indiana. So keep holding up the Hoosier state and we will see you soon. All right. Sounds good. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching the show. Make sure guys that you check us out on all the podcast players, Dan, make sure you subscribe to us on youtube and you check us out on facebook and you listen to it on all of the podcast players give us a review please would you um so just make sure you guys do everything you can to support the show and also guys support the sponsors because they're the ones who make it so that all of the stuff can happen so we can have great guests like dan come on awesome all right thanks we'll talk to you guys appreciate it uh, at the next show rick wallace and I have John Holly here with me. Three phases, dressage, cross country, show jump. And you're out on course and something's going wrong or going right. You know how to react to what they're doing. It was built originally to be a schooling facility and so everything's set up very conveniently.